In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at the cross product of two vectors. For two vectors a and b, the cross product of those two vectors, denoted a cross b, is a vector that's perpendicular to both a and b. We have a formula for the cross product in R3. In R3, given a vector a1, a2, a3, and a vector b, b1, b2, b3, it turns out that a cross b is equal to the following. Now this can be a challenging formula to remember, so here is a quick way to derive this formula. To derive the formula here, start with your vector a. First write down the second coordinate, then the third coordinate, then the first coordinate, and then back to the second coordinate. Do the exact same with vector b. Start with the second coordinate, third coordinate, first coordinate, and again back to that second coordinate. Then what you do to find the x-coordinate of a cross b, we do the down product which will be a2 b3 minus the up product, which will be a3 b2. Likewise, for the y-coordinate, we do the down product, which is a3 b1 minus the up product, which is a1 b3. And for the z-coordinate here of a cross b, we do the down product, a1 b2 minus the up product, a2 b1. This is a relatively easy way to derive the formula for a cross b. Let's take a look at an example. For the following example here, we want to find the cross product of a and b, given that a is 2, 4, 6, and b is negative 1, 2, negative 5. So again, to do this, what we have to do is we write the second coordinate of vector a, which is 4, 6, first coordinate, and then back to that second coordinate. Do the same thing with vector b, so in this case here, 2, negative 5, negative 1, and back to 2. Now going ahead and calculating your cross product for a cross b, coordinate x will be down product, which is negative 20, minus the up product, which is 12, so you get minus 32. For the second vector, we have our down product, which is negative 6, minus our up product, which is negative 10, which comes out to be 4, and for the third coordinate of our vector a cross b, we have our down product, which is 4, minus our up product, which is negative 4, which comes out to be 8. So therefore, we have that a cross b is equal to the vector negative 32, 4, and 8. Notice this is easy to see that it is perpendicular to both a and b. Let's take a look. Notice that taking the dot product of a cross b with a, or vector b, will yield the dot product of zero. Therefore, these vectors are perpendicular to one another. Continuing on, we also have properties of cross product. Given three vectors, P, Q, and R, in R3, we have the following three properties. The first property is that P cross Q is equal to negative Q cross P. So what we have here is cross product is not a commutative operation like dot product. Our second property states that we have distribution of the cross product. Much like with dot product, we also have that same similar property for cross product. And lastly, just like dot product, scalar multiplication can be passed to each vector, either p or vector q, or applied at the end of the operation. Let's take a look at some other results regarding cross product. We also have for cross product that the magnitude of the cross product, i.e. the magnitude of a cross b, is equal to magnitude of a, magnitude of b, and sine of the angle between them. This has some important consequences. Let's take a look. In the following example here, they want us to find the area of the parallelogram. Let's view this as vector a, and this as vector b. Notice these are arranged tail to tail, and the angle between these two vectors is 30 degrees. Now, we know that in this case, 13 would be equal to the magnitude of vector A, and 8 would be equal to the magnitude of vector B here. The area of any parallelogram is going to be its base times its height. The height of the parallelogram would be this value here. Well, by definition, this must equal the magnitude of B sine of 30 degrees. And by definition, the base must equal the magnitude of A. So therefore, the base is equal to magnitude of A, and the height is equal to the magnitude of B sine of 30 degrees. But notice this is exactly the magnitude of A cross B. Therefore, viewing the parallelogram 
as being created by these two vectors, we can therefore conclude that the area of a parallelogram is magnitude of A, magnitude of B, sine of 30 degrees. For the next example here, we want to show that if the cross product of two vectors is zero, then it must be the case that they are collinear. Note, we say that two vectors are collinear if they are scalar multiples of one another. For a quick example, consider the following. The following two vectors are collinear. The reason for that is vector b is just one and a half times vector a. So these two vectors are scalar multiples of one another, and because of that, they are collinear. Now, getting back to our proof, if a cross b is equal to zero, therefore, the magnitude of a cross b will be equal to zero. Therefore, the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times the sine of theta must also equal zero, as these two are equal. But assuming a and b are non-zero vectors, we must therefore conclude that the sine of theta must equal zero. The only two values on our unit circle where sine of theta equals zero is zero degrees and 180 degrees. If the angle between the two vectors is zero degrees, they might look something like this, in which case they will be collinear. If the angle between the vectors is 180 degrees, they will be going in opposite directions, in which case vector b would just equal negative vector a, and they would be scalar multiples of one another, and therefore are also collinear. So therefore, if a cross b is equal to zero, the two vectors are collinear. For the next example here, we want to find the magnitude of u cross v. Notice for the following vectors here, they are not arranged tail to tail. The definition of cross product is for an angle theta where the vectors are arranged tail to tail. Therefore, we must rearrange these vectors. Arranging these vectors tail to tail, we'll notice the angle between these two vectors is 30 degrees. Therefore, we can apply our formula. And we know that the magnitude of u cross v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the sine of the angle between them. So in this case here, this will be 8 times 9 times the sine of 30 degrees, in which case we get 36. So therefore, the magnitude of u cross v is 36. This concludes today's lesson on the cross product. Thank you.